Hey guys, this is Grant from Thunder Laser USA. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a customer spotlight with Katie Devlin. Uh, I'm shooting this intro because I'm a genius and forgot to record it with Katie. So with that being said, let's get right into doing the video with Katie and her talking about her laser journey. My job was very technical in that sense. And so I um, did that for forever. And I just kept doing that at different companies, growing that. And then in 2020... 2020, I got my Glowforge mm -hmm. and was like, okay, I'm obsessed with lasers. This is the coolest thing I've ever done. So much fun. But it was just like a fun thing that I was doing. Um, but I also saw that space of like, no one's teaching this. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then I lost, I um, had a new boss come in at my job in 2021 and she wanted to bring in her own people. So I got a lovely severance package that let me go and explore like what this was really all about doing laser stuff full time. And so I started really just exploring with um, local businesses and what I could make there. And at that point, my frustration level with speed. So I got one really big project. Mm -hmm. that was like tons of cutting acrylic. And I was doing it with my Glowforge in my house with the filter. And, and MDF. So it was like acrylic and MDF and it was stinking at my house mm -hmm. and it took forever. And the MDF filled up my filter and I couldn't get another filter that quickly from, from Glowforge. And it was another $250, which basically ate my entire profit right. of this job. And it took me a week to get this job done from start to finish. It would have taken me on either one of my thunders. It would have taken me a day to do the entire project. So that was when it was like, okay, we need to upgrade. <laughs> we need something that one, I can actually do things at speed. And I, I being an engineer, I didn't like that. I didn't understand and couldn't control a lot of the things within the Glowforge. So it was like, I could maybe manipulate some things, but I didn't have that full control and I couldn't dial things in the way I wanted to. And I couldn't understand what it was doing. So moving over to something that was running on Lightburn and that had, you know, with the Nova having the manual focus and having to understand, okay, that needs to be six millimeters from my material. Why? What does that do? How do I think about that? Oh, and I want it to be a little bit wider and more diffused. Okay. I'm going to move my material down after I focus that. Right. Having that ability and the ability to switch out lenses for different things that I wanted to do was completely game changing. Yeah, and so I've never used the Glowforge, but I got an Xtool P2 over here so that I could play with it because we get compared to them all the time, the yes, Bolt versus the P2. And I got a really good taste of exactly what you're talking about because really the P2 to me is a glorified uh, Glowforge. Like yeah. It uses the camera for everything. You can't really adjust anything. You can use Lightburn with it, but when you switch over to Lightburn, it limits all the features that the machine has. So then it's right. like, what am I doing? Uh, but yeah, not being able to control your user origin, your focus, uh, moving over just a little bit if I needed to get just right. The camera, it was a pain. I'll put yeah. it that way. What type of products do you make with your laser machine? My So my favorite things to make are tumblers. Obviously, it was like one of my favorite things and one of the biggest things I was excited about with getting some bed size. Um, I just enjoy them. I like personalizing things. I like um, people coming to me for gifts and things that they can give and that they can get something personalized they can't get anywhere else. So I love to do keychains, anything acrylic. I'm obsessed with acrylic. I have way too many different acrylic things in my house. Um, I do a lot of keychains, like little um, giftable items. And then I do some B2B stuff. So coasters and um, my friends have a restaurant that we created this whole mug club like suite for them. So we did a sign with the little plaques that are engraved with people's names. We did glass beer mugs. We have keychains that the customers get. Um, so those are some of my favorite things to make. Yeah, and you've become like the go-to person when it comes to cups. Like you've got a, a huge following of people that look to Katie to figure out what the heck they need to be doing. Well, I... I think I have found the ways to make it effective and less complicated. I think you, people try to jump like right into the deep end with full wrap engraves that have a straight line on the seam. And I'm like, 
maybe not. Maybe, maybe that's not where we start. And we can do overlapping, but maybe we don't have a straight line on the seam. And so mm -hmm. helping them kind of understand those things is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more complicated than people set out to uh, to start doing. Like I'll have people who they buy a Nova, right? And they want to engrave cups. They want to cut wood. They want to do all these different things. And they'll get the machine. They'll set it up. And they try to do all those things the first day. Yes. Like, you're going to hate this if you try to do that. Pick yeah. one thing. Make it simple, cut a square out of wood, engrave your name. And then once you get the settings dialed in, go to the next thing. Don't be trying to jump around and yeah, you say in the full wraps on day one, that's that's way too much for a rookie. Yeah. And that there's so much wasted material when that happens. Mm -hmm. And so many tears. So many tears because you think that you're not capable of doing something, but it's not that. It's that you jumped. It's like trying to do a dive off the high dive before you've like done it off the side of the pool. Mm -hmm. you, you're not going to do it well that first time. <laughs> How has the Thunder Laser changed your business for the better? I mean, the biggest things are one, I, I have so much more control over the how my products look because I'm not relying on guesswork. I can master my settings on each material that I have. I can decide how deep do I want this to engrave? How dark do I want it to be? And I can do that with ease and I can get an, an amazing amount of detail. And then with that, I'm still getting additional speed. So not only do I get better results, I get them faster. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to commit to things that I couldn't commit to before because I know that I can get them done in the time frame that that someone needs something for. Because a lot of times when you're working locally, people aren't thinking about these things as far in advance as you might want them to. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to know I can turn things around because they're my machine's quicker, I also don't worry about it being reliable. So I don't worry about if, you know, my machine's going to go down and I'm not going to be able to complete this huge job of, you know, tumblers for the sports team. I know I can get that done. So it's really just been the confidence that both my products are better, that I can make them faster and that my machine's going to be working reliably. Oh yeah. Very well said. Imagine you don't have like hardly any understanding of what's going on. Why would you look at a machine like thunder over some of the other competitors? Yep. So the, the biggest reason I would say, especially the bolt over any of those machines is that you, the, the comparison is almost just not comparable. The mm -hmm. bolt is such a significantly better, more powerful, more capable machine than anything else that you're getting within even a remotely similar price point. One, you have depth for engraving larger items. Two, you have more power and speed. You also have a great community that, so the Glowforge is good if you don't want to learn really how to do laser engraving. And if you mm -hmm. don't want it to be a business, like you, you could maybe run a small, small, small hobby size business with a Glowforge, but if you want to move to anything more scalable, you need a machine that's gonna perform. and at this price point, there's nothing comparable. I actually think sometimes that the price point makes people not consider it to be the amazing machine that it is Yeah. because they don't know what they're getting with that machine. I mean, it's, it's really, really an incredible machine. Um, and if, and if you're doing something like a Glowforge, you are sort of locked into using their materials if you want to be able to use their settings, you also are looking at an additional subscription fee or needing to design outside of that tool set to be able to use even something as simple as mirroring something on your machine. So if I want to engrave on the back of an acrylic keychain in a Glowforge and I don't have premium software, I can't do that unless I take it outside of that software and do that in another design program. Where with Lightburn and a Thunder Machine, I can do that right there and I can do it quickly and I can make the decision on the fly. I can do some on the front, I can do some on the back, I can do all of those things. So if I was thinking about my my starter machine, this is way more than a starter machine. A lot of people are looking at a Glowforge as potentially, or an X tool as potentially a starter machine to see if they like it. 
Well, this can be that machine that you learn the industry standard software, and it can be a machine that lives with you for a very long time until you're looking for maybe something that's bigger, you know, bigger, more powerful for more cutting ability or to just do bigger items. You know, you get excited about something that just doesn't fit. That's when you're going to look for something else. Yeah. And the fact that we've got, like you mentioned, the price point, the bolt is actually cheaper than the Glowforge Pro yeah. or the Pro HD that they're out with now. Uh, it's comparable to the XTool P2. I think the reason why some people may lean that direction is because they look at a machine like a Thunder and think, think it's hard to use. Could you speak to like the ease of use of a machine like our Thunder Laser, the Bolt or the Nova 24? Yes. So um, the Bolt has some of those additional simplicity factors. I, I sometimes call it my lazy laser because it has the autofocus. Mm -hmm. And so once you use the autofocus, there's really nothing complex about using the machine. Um, you know, you're not worried about setting up and aligning mirrors. You can check them and clean them and do maintenance, but you're going to do that on any machine. Um, but it's not difficult to use. The most difficult thing is understanding light burn, which there's lots and lots of tutorials on the web. It's very simple to learn, but you're going to need to learn a software regardless. Mm -hmm. And once you learn light burn, that translates to any machine that you might want to upgrade to in the future. Um, from the Nova standpoint, it, it's very simple to use in um, the instructions that, that you have from Thunder and from doing your training, learning those simple things of once you understand how to focus your, your, uh, focus your laser mm -hmm. using your different focal measurement tools, yep. that's really the, the most challenging thing is just understanding what does everything do but once I went through my hour training and asked all my questions, I felt very confident to go and do all of that. And I wasn't worried I was going to break something because I knew that I had the resources to go call if I, you know, send an email ticket and get somebody on the phone if I absolutely really needed to because I had done something wrong. Um, but I, I think they were actually not very difficult to learn relative to my Glowforge. Yeah, I mean, you hit on the biggest point that no matter which machine you go with, you're going to mainly just have to learn the software. The Thunders, maybe there's one or two other little things that you have to learn, like focal distance and, and things like that. But the, the meat of a laser business is going to be on the computer. Yes. So that's going to be the case no matter which machine you go with. So a Thunder laser is not more difficult than X, Y, or Z laser. And I think um, one additional thing I would say is you're going to have better success overall and over time because with a Glowforge, you're going to start out with their materials, right? Mm -hmm. And your settings are going to be based on their materials. So you won't have an understanding of, I know what 400 speed, 400 millimeters per second speed and 45% power looks like coming from my machine mm -hmm. because you're just kind of pushing in buttons and like letting the QR code tell you this is the right engraving. Well, it, once you learn it with your Thunder machine, you can dial that in and you know, okay, I want to engrave a pencil. Well, that's really similar to a hardwood that I did, or I want to do cork. Well, that's a soft material like something else that I did. And so you'll have a, you'll be quicker in being able to adapt to different materials and you won't feel locked in to using Glowforge specific materials, which are extraordinarily expensive if you want to run any sort of production level. Could you share one success story or milestone that has happened since you started using your laser machines or started your laser business? Sure. I think the most fun thing was doing that, um, doing the project with my friends for their restaurant and being able to give them from start to finish everything that they wanted for their customers and to design it with them and to be like, okay, for this one, for the bar sign that you're doing on this reclaimed wood, we can do everything in acrylic and we can make, and it's a huge sign and it's really cool and it's up in their bar. And I felt super confident being able to offer that to them and not be worried that I wasn't going to be able to accomplish it. And that was really cool because it was things I saw in my head and things that they wanted that I could deliver. Um, and we came up with new ideas. So they were going to spend, they were going to spend almost $25 a glass to have their logo engraved. And it's just this chicken. It's a little chicken. And I was able to show them that I could do that on my Nova and do it like 
way less expensive and still make a great profit for myself. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do that and go to a business, which I think can be more intimidating potentially than selling on Etsy or selling to like a local customer who's like, oh, this is cool. But like, they're going to have that up in their restaurant for forever. Being able to do that was a really cool um, milestone for me. Yeah, I want to see some pictures. That sign that you're talking about, I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I'll send that to you. You were doing something else full time. Yes. And then now you're doing this semi full time, part time. Can you talk about what kind of growth this has made for you and your family to have a laser business? Yeah. Income and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think um, so for myself and my family, having this laser business has just been able to allow me to have more flexibility. Um, I have a young son and being able to be home with him and to be able to create an income through making products and really, like I said, focusing on that business to business and getting some of these bigger orders that I'm able to do on my time and turn them around quickly has been wonderful for the flexibility that that has offered me, but also the, the income um, being able to know that I have these big jobs that I can do and um, they're very profitable. So I've really enjoyed that. What do you like most about Thunder Laser? Uh, everything, but um, <laughs> my favorite things about Thunder Laser, one, it, there's, there's a whole bunch of things. So let's talk first about the machines. I mean, they're built like tanks. They are, they are just exceptional machines that have every feature that I could want. And then I, I don't worry about them breaking. I don't worry about me breaking them. Um, I don't worry that I'm not going to be able to get help and support if something were to go wrong. And then once I have had to use support, so I had a power supply issue with my Nova um, and we were able to get videos back and forth of check these few things. And I had a new power supply in the mail the next day. And I was able to be down maybe one or two days just for shipping time, but that was it. And the team is really, really wonderful at walking through things in detail and at a level that doesn't make you feel silly for asking the questions that you're like, I don't understand what I'm asking. I don't know how to ask this question. The support team is excellent at teasing out the right information to help you move forward and to help you figure out what your problem is. And whether it's a you problem, a software problem or a machine problem, the team is excellent at that. And I really, really enjoy that. I also really enjoy that it's a culture that wants to get people the right machine for what they want to do. So I, I never felt like with anyone that I have steered towards Thunder, they always come out with a machine that they feel really excited about, whether they thought they might want a 51100 and they end up in a 3580 or they thought they want a Bolt and they end up in a Nova. They feel really confident that it's the right machine for the things that they want to make. So there's no pressure there from a, we're going to try to get you in the biggest machine that doesn't serve your needs. Thunder, overall, you guys are really wonderful about that. And I really appreciate that. And I also appreciate that you don't have a an influencer, influencer culture. So, you know, you have people who are affiliated with you, but they're not out there pushing a machine because it brings back a kickback to them. So we all authentically really do love our machines and love talking about our machines and have had such great experiences that we'll talk about them forever without that being any kickback. You know, people will ask me like, well, what's your affiliate code? And I'm like, no affiliate code. We're just, we, we just love our machines and want you to have a machine that's going to serve you well. And that's something I actually really do appreciate that Thunder has made that choice to not go into that. What advice would you give someone who is wanting to start a laser business? The, the first thing I would say is once you decide on your machine, but I would decide on your machine based on what you think you want to make. So really understanding, you know, there's a lot of talk about finding your niche and figuring all of that out. I think really figure you figure that out through two things. You figure that out through what you like to make and who you like to make it for. So you can either choose I really want to make products for dog lovers and I can make a whole bunch of different things for dog lovers, or I really want to make tumblers and I want to make every kind of tumbler there is under the sun. And I want to be known for tumblers. Once you sort of figure that out, that'll help you figure out what machine you need. Once you figure that out, then test and develop your skill set 
in small ways first. So master those things in simple things and then move on to more complex things. Because the more confidence that you have that what product you're creating is good, awesome product, you're going to be confident in your pricing. You're not going to be looking at other people's pricing. You're going to be able to sell it to whoever because you're going to know, I know exactly what it went into this product. I know my costs. I know how long it takes me. And I know it's a great product. So really mastering those skills instead of kind of bouncing all over the place, I think is really important to help grow fast. If you don't care about the speed that you grow, you can kind of bounce around. But I think if you really care about having something that you can be referable for, so whether that's in your community or whether that's online, if someone knows you as the Tumblr person, or if someone knows you as, you know, the wood, you do really great um, cutting boards for every realtor in your whole market. Being able to be known for those things and for the quality of them is what's going to help you grow really fast. I think the only other thing I might say is you, if you have ideas in your head that you want to be able to create and you think that a Glowforger and X tool is the only way to do that, I would suggest that you will be able to create much more with more detail and more capability by moving to something where you have more control of the machine and by moving to a Thunder Laser where you have you know, with my bolt, with my RF tube, the amount of detail that some of these artists who are looking for these things as, you know, a way to do art in a different way, with that RF tube, the amount of detail that they're going to be able to get, they're going to be amazed at what they can produce and the new way to share their art with the world. And to have that level of control and not be locked into cloud-based software or only one software that's specific to that machine just opens up a world of possibilities.